Welcome. The foot of your pottery, the part that starts down here and then continues underneath it, is an often overlooked part of your pottery. And I mean, most people probably won't notice it much, but potters like you and me, we always take a pot like this, turn it around and look. <laughs> How does it look? And I think it is part of the finish of a pot. So I think you should pay attention to it. However, there is a lot of different ways that you can make uh, this last part of your pot. And of course, it can be a challenge to make a foot like this where you carve it out or cut it out, trim it out. There are many different kinds of foods. This is probably like a classic sort of food. You have a little bit of, of raised element here, and then you have trimmed out the inside, or I have trimmed out the inside of the foot. This is, a, I would say, a very classic way of doing it. But I also often do it when I don't need to glaze. I just continue the shape all the way down here. I don't need any, any glaze catch or anything. I still have trimmed out the inside. So it's kind of like a variation of that classic design. This is also a very classic uh, foot design, I would say, for a bowl. So it's carved out, trimmed out in the middle. And that also gives me the option to glaze it on the inside. Of course, if the, if the bottom was flat, I couldn't glaze it. But you don't need to trim the inside of a pot. This is a, a, a cup, um, also not glazed on the outside, glazed on the inside. But it didn't, um, I didn't trim out the foot instead. I sort of uh, just made it flat and curved it in just a little bit because if, if you don't curve it in, uh, you end out very often with a foot that bulges out and then of course it won't stand well. Also for some of my cups, uh, I wire them off with a wiggled wire. And uh, this is something that uh, I got inspired by Simon Leach to do, a yeah, very great potter. So wire them off like this. It gives it like an interesting uh, peasant down here. So it actually becomes part of the design of, um, of the pot. I actually really, really like this. It's an interesting design, I think. It works well for, um, for, for a cup like this. Also for a lot of my vases like this, because I'm dealing with glazes, even though these glaze, this glaze run. It's a combination of floating blue uh, and heat A2 white and some oxides. I know them so well that I can actually do the same thing as I did on the white one. I, um, I glaze all the way down, except <laughs> what I do is, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a little bit of um, an edge here. So I don't glaze, uh, there's actually a couple of millimeters down at the bottom where I don't glaze. And I think it gives a part a really nice look, both from upside and down. I, um, I did some initial trimming. Uh, mostly on the outside. I made a little bit of a separation, stronger separation between um, the, the, the manipulated uh, rim and, and the body. And I think that will look nice. But as you also notice, I didn't put a foot uh, with, my, with my foot tools, uh, these ones, on this one. Because I think the design uh, kind of calls for just going in um, uh, all the way and not have this, uh, this extra uh, foot. So this will be a good uh, example to show you how I do, because I mean, now it goes all the way down to the bed. And so if you glaze it and the glaze just runs even a millimeter, it will hit your shelves and will stick to it. And of course it will break off doing that. So I'll show you a trick of uh, how you can, um, can get the glaze all the way down without hitting the shelf. It's actually really cool. So first I'm gonna cut it off. And now, as you see for this pot, with this sort of rim, because we have all these little highlights, if I put this upside down on a hard bed, they will probably chip off because, I mean, it's only, it's only in a, in a, a, a green where dry stage, so it's very fragile. So instead, I have made this bed that is exactly for this purpose. And it's basically um, a bed where I glued a where I glued a piece of an old mattress onto it, which means that it's soft, but it's still sticky. 
It's a little more tricky to put on because, of course, you can't see <laughs> the actual holes on your on your on your bed. Uh, but um, yeah, it usually works out sooner or later. <laughs> There we go. So now we have this bed, and, um, and we can put a pot like this that's a little more fragile. I'm just gonna empty the crumbs from the inside. And it won't um, it won't get hurt by um, by um, by the hard bed. So now we just need to um, to um, Center it, which is a little more tricky on this sort of bed because you can't push it, um, which is good. <laughs> now that it's centered, the first thing I will do is try and even out the, the surface. And again, I'm gonna hold my my elbows to my knees and uh, try not to let the clay control me, but control the clay. So now, at least it's a little more flat, and I want to check if it's still centered. I could need a little bit. So now it's centered, and um, I want to start out with doing a relatively wide uh, uh, foot rim. I'm going to show you why in a second. And again, I'm just going to mark. Um, and I can see now that it's uh, even all the way around, so I can go a little bit deeper. And now the same as with the other part, I'm going to use the corner and take from the inside out to my marker. So, that was the first step. And see, this was actually an example of the clay that wants to control um, and then don't let it do that. It can take a bit of force to hold it in place. And this is still very thick. And again, I'm trying to make a bit of a curve. Um, so I'm making it deeper on the, the outer skirts. And as we reach the middle, I'm going to go uh, higher there. And again, I'm going to go back to this wider one. And again. Oh, this is actually really thick. <laughs> I didn't realize I made it this thick. Um, anyway, that just means that we can take off some more. So now we're getting there. I think I'll actually use um, this tool a little bit. Sometimes it's uh, better at scraping. So I don't know if you can hear it, but now now we're getting closer. Just gonna smooth it out with this uh, wider turning tool. So this uh, foot was actually thicker than than I expected. Um, I would usually not throw it this thick, but now I did. <laughs> so um, at least now we got it trimmed out, so it's not so bad. And then I will make it completely flat on the top. And now comes the trick <laughs> in terms of avoiding, because you see now it goes all the way down here. So the glaze would go here and it uh, will very easily stick uh, to the, to the, to this calcium. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to cut at about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to cut away 
a little bit here. Only like a couple of uh, millimeters, maybe half a centimeter or something. Something like this. It's only visible from this side. So now I will only glaze to this part. So there's going to be maybe four or five millimeters here that's not glazed and it's got a 45 degree angle. Now when you turn this pot around, it's going to look like the glaze goes all the way down, but in reality it doesn't. And so you don't have this problem that it's sticking to your kiln shelf. So it's a very neat little trick um, if you want to have that visual impression of the glaze going all the way down. So now it's time to burnish it a little bit. And again, I round off the edges so we don't have any sharp edges. And just gonna make it nice and smooth inside. And then leave my maker's mark. And then in this case also, I'm gonna do it on the inside here. So here we go. Looks good. So now this part is ready. I don't know exactly what I call this pattern, but a split rim pattern. And then um, I think it looks wonderful. And then um, if you look at the bottom here, I think it's nice. It's got a nice curve. And then um, you see here, this um, part, this little bevel, I hope you can see it. But it means that when I put it like this, you won't actually see uh, that it's not glazed all the way down. It's a Visual trick, but it works. For some designs, I like to have this, um, I don't know what you call it, but this bulb uh, in the end of the pot. It's maybe easier to see, if you see it here. So it serves two purposes. It's sort of visual function. It kind of gives it like a, like a platform, a foot to stand on. But it also serves a practical uh, purpose in terms of um, catching the glaze. So if you have a glaze like this that tends to run a little bit, it will kind of stop the glaze there. Now this clay, of course, is very white, and I'm not sure I like that white too much, but I could have given it a, an oxide wash or something um, just to blend it a little more into the pot. There are many ways you can do this. Um, some potters I know, they just do it with a little whip by hand. Very good at doing that, I'm sorry. But you can also use a foot tool for that. Uh, this is the first one I got. I got this from Old Force uh, Creations in, uh, in England. It's actually very nice. Um, I only have this one from him and there's a big in one end and a small in the other end. Now the only problem with this is it's not so long. So if you have a very shallow bowl and you want to get underneath it, it's a little bit difficult. And of course you only have these two shapes. So just recently, I got these uh, four different ones from a German company. Um, I will put a link in, um, in the description. They're very nice. They are a little bit longer. You can see they're a little bit longer. They got a couple of holes here, which makes it easier to hold on to it. Uh, very nice too. It's made in almost the same material, almost the same thickness, uh, standard steel. Um, but these ones also comes in four different designs. And then I got all of them. And then some of them are, um, are more square, some of them are more rounded, some of them have an undercut. And again, similar to the tool from Old Forge, there's uh, in one end a small version and in the other end a larger version. So I have four different designs now, plus the Old Forge one, and um, that's wonderful. I have one more base, uh, oh, bowl, <laughs> um, and for this one, I also want to make a foot with my new German tools. Um, and again, I'm going to link to um, where you can get these ones um, in the description. Maybe also put a link somewhere here. Uh, for the first one, I used this one with a very heavy undercut. And I think it looks nice, but now I want to use this one that have almost the same size, but uh, less of an undercut. I'm going to try that. And now you see, it's really handy that they're so long because this one is difficult to get in under, but with this tool, even, even if it was a much wider shallow bowl, I would still be able to get in there. Just want to make sure that, um, that it's 
clean down here before I start doing it. Um, because otherwise I'm gonna, gonna push in all these little uh, pieces of clay into uh, my new nice uh, foot. And of course, I don't want that. So, I excuse for the noises. <laughs> I love that noise, don't you? <laughs> so I'm gonna use again. There's a there's a white one here, um, and there's a small one here. I'm gonna use the big one. It's a big bowl, so I'm just gonna go slow. Not gonna scrape off too much at one time. When I remove the clay as we go. Now I'm beginning to get a really nice, really nice foot here. It's sort of difficult to see <laughs> from here, but I'm going to cut it loose. And then I'm gonna um, perfect the, the 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 connection between the foot and the wall. And for this bowl, I'm going to use uh, my my sponge or my mattress, uh, my soft. Um, Bed as well, because it's um, well, just gonna remove these crumbles <laughs> so it doesn't wobble too much. So, yeah, that's good because this is also sort of a fragile um, rim we have here, so I, I don't want to put this on a on a hard bed. And it almost fits. <laughs> So now you can see it looks okay, but it definitely needs a little more shaping. Um, so I can use it um, like this. This one is, is almost equal on both sides, so I can use it like this. I'm not sure. This is actually the way that it was supposed to be used. But it actually works pretty well that way too. Because this way, way I can sort of move it around and make a really nice um, bulby um, foot. Or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think that looks nice. So now of course we need to remove this skirt that's just uh, below the foot. Which is fine, it's no problem. I may want to try and recenter this a little bit. It's completely centered. I think this is better. And this point, of course, you can decide how much you're going to take away. The more clay I'm going to take away here, the more it's going to stand out. I don't want it to stand out too much, um, so I'm just going to use this. So, you see, I think this looks good. I think we may want to... It does take a little bit of practice to get this perfect. Uh, it's, it's not just an out of the box tool, but, but I think it's still easier than, than, than trying to do it um, manually. You could probably learn to do something similar like this, just uh, with a rib, but I think it's a great help. Um, and it's a relatively cheap tool, so. You may be wondering why I'm not uh, securing um, uh, the pot. Usually you see uh, potters put uh, pieces of clay around. Several reasons. These pots are pretty big, 
and uh, therefore they wait a lot. So they, they tend to just stick with you. Also, when I'm using this uh, uh, mattress <laughs> kind of uh, thing here, it, it kind of sits really well. So I don't actually need um, to put anything to hold it in place. And you definitely don't need a given grip. I don't know if it's just me, but I sort of hate that idea of the given grip. It's, uh, it gives me zero flexibility and, and I sort of like to have that. So maybe that's just me. And now I'm just making sure that this part where I'm going to put the, the, the rim um, is, um, is even and flat. So same thing as we did with the other parts. I'm going to start out marking um, the area for the foot rim. And now I can see that it's even. So now you can see it's actually even all the way around. So um, I can dig down a little deeper here. And now I can take from the middle out. Sometimes I start out with a rim that is a little thicker than what I want to end up with because it's easy to cut off um, some of it, <laughs> but you can't add anything. So um, I think one of the tricky parts about doing this kind of, of uh, foot is that very often it gets jumpy and, hot and it cuts into it and then you get a very uneven foot and it, it doesn't look so good. So um, I'm trying to, to hold really tight to it and, and not let the clay take uh, control. Which it really, really wants to. <laughs> but I want to take control. You see, it's getting more clean now. And, uh, and once you get a more clean and, and surface, you can start letting um, the tool uh, follow the clay because you have a a consistent uh, or you know, a clean surface to do it on. So now going back to the other wider tool. Yeah, it's difficult to hear uh, when you're on a soft surface. It doesn't sound as much. So. Yeah, I think we're getting there now. I'm just going to clean it up, making sure that the foot, this is where it stands, so it needs to be really, really um, flat, smooth, nice. Rounding off the corners. I just want to smooth it, make sure that our new foot, the rounded foot is nice and smooth, and the inside of the foot also. This looks really good. Just a little bit on the outside here. So, I think we have a very nice and smooth foot now, with a little bit of a bulby foot. So now, again, just want to leave my maker's mark, just like this. That's it. I ended up trimming and making the foot on three bolts. One of them you didn't see, <laughs> that was the first one. And to be honest, I did actually film it. But then when I started editing, I realized that the sound was completely ruined. So I couldn't really use that. But this one was made um, with the German tool as well. So we have this um, bumpy foot, <laughs> what you call it, um, and trim foot on the inside. And I think it looks beautiful. So that one, was done without the video. At least it's not included here. The other two was this one with uh, no visible foot, but with this uh, um, little uh, trick that I showed you, where I have this little bevel, so that it looks like the glaze is going to go all the way down, but in reality there's a few millimeters left, so it won't stick to my kiln. And then of course the last one, uh, my ravioli bowl, <laughs> but I also have a video about how I do the rims, which have the bob down here and they're beautifully trimmed on the inside of the foot. They're bone dry now, so they're also very fragile. So 
anytime you move around both like this, be very careful. Also, I want to uh, note a, a thing. If you look at this on the inside, it's trimmed. And yes, despite what a lot of pottery teachers and uh, websites will tell you, you can actually trim pots on the inside. Of course, they need to be open forms like this. Um, if it's a vase, I don't know how <laughs> you would get in there, but for an open form like this. And so why do we trim them inside? Well, there's basically two reasons. One is that sometimes the curve inside is not perfect. Even though I try to make it perfect when I throw it, it's not always perfect. There could be little bulbs and, you know, inconsistencies. And I can make it perfect with the trimming. So why not do that? The other reason is, and that's especially true if I make uh, textured uh, pots, um, they may be a little bit too thick. And uh, even though I primarily try and trim on the outside, sometimes there's something left that, well, it, in terms of getting the right shape, I still need to remove some clay to make it light enough. And then I trim on the inside. So these pots are now wonderful, you know, have a nice weight. Um, not super light, but they are as light as you would expect this bowl to be. And uh, so it's perfect. So now I will uh, bisque them. And then in a future video, I will come back and show you how I glaze these pots. Uh, these ones that have these special uh, rims um, and also the textured um, bowls that I did some time ago with different, uh, more or less dramatic textures on the outside, because there's some options, challenges, and great things you can do with the glazing on that. So I hope to see you soon again for that video. Uh, as usual, I will uh, publish a new video every Sunday. Usually I will premiere it uh, around 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Central European time. So if you like this video, please like, share, comment if you have some great tips for how to do things. So just like to appreciate your enjoyment of, um, of the videos. Critics are welcome too. Anything is really welcome. As long as you keep the proper and sober the language, um, I welcome everything. So um, I hope to see you next Sunday and um, have a great day. Thank you.